Today, I'm going to go see Bob and Stephanie. They've got a cat named Buddy, who's a Scottish Fold, a rare breed who just wandered into their yard one day pretty well feral. That means he can't be touched, handled, and he doesn't want anything to do with people. <laughs> They're heartbroken about this because they just want a pet. I'm going in there today to see if there's any way I can help, I don't know, turn back the clock. All right, buddy. There you are. Hi, bucko. Hi. Well, look at your little foldy self. I got treats for you, buddy. Look what I got for you. Come here, bud. It's OK. Mm. All right, buddy. You don't have to be in the corner if you don't want. Oh, God, you smell. What's going on with your jaw? What is that? I got to see what's going on with your jaw. Hi. OK. Damn it. Man. There is something going on in your mouth, man. You going to swipe me or what? Ah, ooh, that was a good one. I got this close, and bam, he got me. Then he hissed at me, and man, that hiss just about knocked me off my feet. It's not just normal cat bad breath. Something in there smells like it died, and we got to take care of it. Ever since this morning, when you told me what was going on, I started marinating these gloves in this chicken. I want you to keep doing that. This is ridiculous. This it's is not so... our normal attire. Because here's the thing. It's going to sound really weird, but I want to start desensitizing the hands by presenting them as something that is always good to him. Buddy definitely has an issue with hands. Every time Steph goes to pet him or anything like that, he scratches. And that is concerning, because that means the feral part of Buddy is strong. From now on, these meat gloves are going to be this tool for reassociating the presence of hands and the movement of hands with the best thing in the world, which is the chicken. Well, we got Betty to the um, vet, and um, she gave him a thorough exam. She um, was concerned about his chin. She cleaned it out. She wanted to do a biopsy, so she did a biopsy. And the results were that it's cancer. I'm, I am, I'm sorry, uh, not good. I was thinking that maybe he had an abscessed wound from a fight, but he has cancer? Really didn't see that one coming at all. I'm trying to get my arms around this one. Prognosis? Um, the vet said that she spoke to the oncologist um, and that time is crucial. But the procedure's $2,600. We talked together earlier was that we were going to put it in Jackson's hands. We, want, we hands. want your honest opinion as far as what you think that he is. What he, to do. What to do. As soon as Bob and Stephanie put the decision about Buddy's life or death in my hands, first of all, the only thing that we're here to care about is Buddy's well-being. If that cat is as wild as he was the first time I met him and he's going to get this surgery, there's no life for him. He's going to have to be in a cage. He's going to have to have recovery while he's completely freaked out, in pain, and still not accepting touch. It's no way to live. And at that point, you got to start looking at what's the kindest thing for him. That's not kind. I will, of course, give you my input. I'm going to do my due diligence on this one as well. And I'll come back to you with what I think. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about possible gains that you might have made with him over the past couple of weeks. We've made some great gains. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, good. OK. You guys shot some video for me. I've got it here. So here we go. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You ready to eat? We got to see Buddy coming in from outside. Hey. Stephanie hand feeding this cat while she's wearing the gloves and reassociating the presence of hands with chicken. I don't even know if Stephanie realizes how massive this is. Two weeks ago, <laughs> impossible. It wouldn't have happened. His only experience with hands is really negative. So to be able to be fed with a hand is bigger than you'll ever know. Here. <laughs> Where is the boy right now? He's actually behind the firewood. OK, then. We got him down here. All right, mister. Well, good morning. Hi, buddy. Stephanie, while I'm doing this, yeah. what I'd like you to do, yeah. go get some chicken. Yeah. Put the glove on. And with your gloves on, please. Are you going to get some chicken? Good boy. Hi. 
I'm gonna pull myself to the side. What's out here? I got chicken. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Good boy. What? Look at I got chicken. Come here. Are you kidding me? What? Are you kidding me? When Buddy did come out of the woodpile, he didn't take the chicken. What he did take was much more important. He took the room. Yeah, he's acting a little scared, but he's a scared companion cat, not a caged-in wild cat anymore. When I go away for two weeks and I come back and you see this, it blows you away because he's not feral trapped inside a house. He's just sort of a scaredy cat indoors. He just needed his own little cave, his nook, his cranny. I knew at that moment that Buddy was coming around. I was ready to tell you that it wasn't fair to him to keep him around. But I completely changed my mind, and I recommend that you go forward with the surgery. I wouldn't be so sure about saying that if it weren't for what I saw today. What we're facing here is a new hurdle that's added to this whole project, and, um, it's curable, though, so it's not like it's going to. Well, the, the hurdle here is a $2,600 price tag. But he will live if he has this procedure. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm going to start crying. Long story short, I recommend that you go forward with the surgery. I do, too. Bob, are you on board on this? Can I, can I get your commitment that this is going to happen? I was waiting for your assurance that you felt the right thing. So I'll commit to it. Right on, man. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Every cat deserves this, man. Every cat deserves this. And, and Buddy gets this today, man. And that is a privilege to watch. How's the boy? The boy is doing good. He's, is he really? They got all the cancer out from his surgery. Really? How long was he in the hospital? He was in overnight. I picked him up the next day, and she called me with the results three days later, and she said that they got it all. He's cancer free. Oh, yay. But he wandered this neighborhood for years until somebody who also was thrown away at some point in their life said, nah, this is not going to happen to another being on my watch. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I cannot even tell he's had surgery. And that horrible smell coming from his mouth, gone. It Hi, is. Baby. Look at how that's healing. When this whole process started, Buddy was back into a feral state. Now he wants to be out here with us and hang out. Come on, let's go, Buddy. Buddy, come on. There we go. Good boy. Come on, baby. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Come back buddy. in, Stephanie. Good boy. Come on, baby. Come on, buddy. There we go. Come on, Good baby. Boy. Let's go. It's gonna run through there. Oh, look at how he moves. This cat was pretty much feral just a few weeks ago. He wouldn't come near these guys. So the fact that Stephanie can call this cat and that he responds to her, that means to me that Buddy has left his feral days behind.